You would expect that after a decade and five years of living with someone as child and parent, it wouldn't be so easy to discard the bond formed. But Imajin was quickly learning how fickle relationships were. If there was anything she could do to go back to the days of painting nails together, having gossip sessions or shopping trips with her mother, she would do. Anything but the ignoring, which was what Rachel had taken to doing with Imogene. It was different with Calvin, and Imogene had to give him credit. He still treated, well tried to, treat her like he used to in the past. But even that was hard, especially when she knew her days as a Blanchette would soon come to an end. Actually, scratch that. Her days as a Blanchette were over. She was just biding her time to find out who she was. Together, but separated. Imogen. Was that still going to be her name? Who was her real family? How did she come to live with Blanchettes? Day after day, Imogene's questions grew so much, it was all she thought about. While eating, while sleeping. Another thing that happened was she'd been officially pulled out of regular school and started homeschool. To protect your privacy until you leave, was what Calvin said, and Imogene didn't want to argue with him. He had no obligation to her anymore, so everything he gave, she took with a thank you and a smile. Excruciating months passed and little to no progress had been made in finding the Blanchette's real daughter or Imogene's biological family. With this brought a worse attitude from Rachel, and Imogene could see even Calvin was getting frustrated. Then Imogene's birthday rolled around the corner. Before this whole situation, they talked about what they'd do to celebrate Imogene turning 18. As you would guess, all the plans were forgotten, but Calvin was considerate enough to give her a gift. Then the waiting continued. On one fateful day, a few months later, Imogene was in her room when a knock came on the door and Sally walked in. She smiled and sat next to Imogene on the bed. Fortunately, she was one of the handful of people whose attitude remained the same toward Imogen. Even Mary, the woman who'd been her nanny since she was born, treated her differently, muttering under her breath when she came in and making quips about Imogen not deserving to be here and being an imposter. It hurt more than she would like to admit. How do you feel now? Sally placed a hand over Imogen's forehead. Do you still feel lightheaded? Humming. Emma Jean leaned into Sally's touch with a sigh. If it weren't for her presence in the house, there was no way she would have kept her sanity intact. I feel a lot better. Sorry that I disturbed you. Don't be silly. The older woman scolded, then pinched Emma Jean's cheeks. Jeannie? Her light tone became serious, telling Emma Jean that whatever she wanted to say was serious. Yes, Sally? They found her. It didn't take a genius to figure out who Sally meant by here. Imogene's replacement. Wait, in this case, here was the original, and Imogene was the replacement. With a sigh, she sat up and Sally took her hand back. She brought her knees to her chest, a comforting position, before asking, What's her name? Loretta? Lolara. Imogene rolled the name around in her head. It was a pretty name. Sally then proceeded to tell her the truth of what happened. Turned out, at the hospital Imogene and Loretta were born. A nurse had swapped a few of the babies with each other, and Loretta had in fact not been raised by Imogene's biological parents, but a completely different family. Just a few days later, she met here, Loretta. Imogene got downstairs just in time to see Rachel all over Loretta, which was expected, but didn't make it hurt any less. Even Calvin's excitement couldn't be contained. I'm a Jean. This is Loretta. Your situations are alike, so I hope you're able to get along, pending when you have to leave. Tick tock. Thus says the clock. Imogene had never questioned or wondered why she didn't look like either Calvin or Rachel, but looking at Loretta was almost like looking at a younger version of Rachel. Hello, Loretta. As much as the situation is a bit weird, it's nice that you're able to reconnect with your biological family. Imogene's words came from a place of sincerity. Would she be like this with her biological parents too? She could only hope. She raised her gaze up to see Loretta silently leveling her with an expression she couldn't quite read. When the silence stretched and Loretta didn't say anything, 
Imogen took it as her cue to go back to her room. Imogen, we found your family a few days ago. She'd only taken a few steps when Calvin's voice stopped her. You'll be leaving tomorrow. What Calvin didn't mention was he was worried. He hadn't been able to find a lot of information about them. But from what he found out, they were from Pippin. Even if you don't know Pippin, you've heard about it. It was notorious for being the poorest people in the country, and the people that came out of there weren't any better. If it weren't only up to him, he would continue to raise Imogen as his daughter, but Rachel was adamantly against it. Imogen didn't turn around. With a hum to show she heard, she went upstairs and back to her room. Her room, thinking about it, made her laugh. From tomorrow, she would no longer be able to refer to this place as hers. It would just be a room in a house she used to live in. By the closet were four large boxes that weren't there before. Sally's doing. With their sizes, they would accommodate everything she had accumulated as a Blanchette. A while later, Emma Jean was studying a white dress in her hand when someone tapped her shoulders. Loretta was standing behind her, tapping her ear. So Imogen took off her headphones. Did you want something? The other girl took a seat at the edge of Imogene's bed, her lips curling up into a smile. You must hate me, right? Imogene leaned against the closet, folding her arms. I don't understand what you mean. A scoff escaped Loretta's lips as she crossed her legs. With an eyebrow raised, she replied, I'm taking your life of luxury and you're being sent to the pigs. If I were in your position, I would feel wrong. The pigs? Imogen rubbed a finger against her brows, her face crinkling with confusion. Ah! Uh. Loretta uncrossed her legs with a gasp before her hand flew up to her mouth. You didn't know about that. She stood and moved closer to where Imogen stood until she was right in front of her. Their biological family lives in the slums. Pippin. The name was a familiar place to Imogen, not because she'd been there, but because of its notorious reputation. Seeing the expression on Imogen's face, Loretta smirked. That's where you're going. If it makes you feel any better, my dad doesn't want you going. She laughed airily and walked to the door. Her hand on the knob, she stopped and looked back. Oh, I should probably mention this too. I'm getting engaged to Alec Timberlake next month. Mom told me, good for you, Loretta. Imogene responded and saw the exact moment the smile wiped off Loretta's face. If there was one good thing that came out of the situation, it was this. Alec Timberlake was a boy her age. She'd met a few times, and it had been obvious that both parents wanted them to get married eventually. Except Imogene hated him, and for good reasons too. The way his nose wrinkled around anyone he perceived to get below his league was disgusting. Even worse were the misogynistic statements about women's role in the society he often liked to say. Considering his mother was a governor, it was ridiculous. The point of the matter was Loretta could have him. What? I'm happy for you. I think you two will get along just well. The weird vibes she'd gotten from Loretta weren't made up. It was clear the other girl was sizing her up. 